Here we're going to look at an application of finding absolute maximum and absolute minimum values of functions. Uh, and this is an application in business and economics. Remember that sometimes we can uh, come up with a relationship between the price that's charged for a good and the number of units of that good that consumers will be willing to buy. Uh, in this example, we have such a function. And remember that that's called a demand function for the product. So the demand function tells you the relationship between price and the quantity demanded. And in this case, we have the price written in terms of the quantity demanded. And that's actually going to uh, make it a little bit easier for the problem we're going to work on here to find the maximum possible revenue. Uh, because remember that revenue is price times quantity. So we can write the revenue in this case as a function of the quantity because we can write the price in terms of the quantity. So instead of P here for the revenue, I'm going to write 600 minus 3Q. And then price times quantity will be that times Q, which we could write another way. If we want to distribute the multiplication here, we get 600Q minus 3Q squared. Before we go any further with the calculus, I want to draw a quick little sketch of what this looks like here. Um, we Not the revenue, but the demand function. So if uh, you graph this function p of q, this is a linear function, so the graph would be a straight line. It would intersect the p-axis at 600. And then if you plug in a 0 for p and so for q, you'll see that it intersects the q-axis at 200. So the graph might look something like this. And what this graph is showing us is if uh, you want to sell more units, you have to decrease the price. And it looks like the maximum that anyone is going to be interested in paying is $200. If you charge more than that, no one's going to buy. And it looks like the most you're going to be able to, uh, I'm sorry, the, the most you'll be able to sell is 200 units. And the largest price that you'd be able to charge is $600. And no one will pay more than that. So um, what price should we charge if we want to maximize the revenue? Well, that's where this revenue function comes in. We can find the maximum value by figuring out where this function has its maximum, its absolute maximum. Uh, on this interval, the Q values have to be between 0 and 200. So let's... Uh, go through the process for finding an absolute maximum. Uh, the derivative of the revenue function is 600 minus 6q. Set that equal to 0 in order to find critical values. And you end up with q equals 100. That's the only critical value. Uh, we can evaluate the revenue function when we plug in the critical value of 100. Uh, you get 600 times 100 minus 3 times 100 squared. And that's going to simplify to 60,000 minus 30,000 or 30,000. Um, and let's imagine the units on this are given. Maybe they're in dollars. So this tells you if you sell 100 units, you'll get a revenue of $30,000. Uh, now, we're looking for an absolute maximum, so let's also check the endpoints. Uh, if we plug in zero, so we sell no units, well, we're going to collect no money. If you plug a zero into this function, you'll see it simplifies to zero. And if we plug in the other endpoint, 200 units, well, it turns out that this also simplifies to zero. 600 times 200 minus 3 times 200 squared. Check it out. Use your calculator if you want. That simplifies down to zero. Why is that? Well, in order to sell 200 units, you have to drop the price down to zero. And so you're not making any money on each unit you sell. All right, so where's the maximum? Well, that's here. So the maximum revenue will be $30,000.
or maybe it's not dollars if your units are something different. But this was a simple example of how you can use absolute maximum and absolute minimum in an application problem. Uh, another version of this question might have asked what price to charge or how many to sell. If you want to know how many to sell, well, that's your Q value. And it turned out that the maximum value occurred when you sold 100 units. And if you wanted to know what price to charge, well, you could use the relationship between price and quantity to figure out the value of P. If you plug 100 in for Q, you end up with P equals 600 minus 300, or P equals 300. So maybe you'd sell the uh, units for $300 a piece if your units are dollars.